Listen, y'all. I got a very interesting story time for y'all today. This is going to help a lot of y'all out today. This is interesting. This one is very interesting, you guys. What's up, guys? Tommy Big Vic. Back with another video. Today, I got to talk to y'all about this low that... We just recently, well, we didn't just recently ran. We ran this, I ran this load about a month ago. We ran the Amazon load from like Tennessee to Georgia. Then we caught a load from Georgia back a little closer to like Nashville. And the load was paying $350. I think it was two two crate size pallets, small like crate size pallets, right? Low got picked up well, low got dropped off, great. Everybody signed off on the BOL, low delivered, great condition. 30 days later, y'all, 30 days later, 30 days later, I get an email, just pops up in my email. The broker is spot Inc. This is the load we ran the load that the load paid like 350 after factor and maybe like 330 330 something bucks. Y'all tell me why in my email there was a claim for damages of about ten thousand dollars. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again because I know y'all like, wait a minute, what? I'm going to run that back one more time. I said there was a claim for a damaged freight. Two things on my truck. It got loaded on my truck and got unloaded off my truck. Strapped down to the side of the truck. And then there's a claim put in for ten thousand dollars y'all nine thousand eight hundred something bucks or some something weird like that so i'm looking at the email like this i i i know this ain't for for my company so i look i look at the rate con i go back go through my emails i look i'm looking at my rate con look at the load see who i have rolling on that load I'm like, yo, did you take pictures of that load that we put on the truck? After we ran that Amazon load, we picked up that broker load going from, uh, right, I think it was Chattanooga to, to somewhere, somewhere in there. Come, go, going to Chattanooga, something like that, from, from Georgia. It's like, I think I, I think I did. Lo and behold, I don't think we have photos of it. But they sent me photos. I'm gonna put I'm gonna pop the photos up on the screen. They sent me photos of what was supposedly damaged when the receiver made this claim 30 days later after this load was dropped. Y'all, I'm still stuck on the load was only paint. The load only paint was just enough to get us a, a, a trip a trip back from Georgia back to, to, to like the Nashville chatter somewhere around in that area I'm still tripping off of that part that it was only 350 bucks for the for the for the run but it was apparently they saying there was some LED lighting equipment that went to this equipment spot uh, equipment sh store somewhere and this stuff this stuff that's already this packaged up like number one the bol numbers that they sent me versus what was on my truck don't even match there's like three or four pieces that they had that they sent me and i only had two things on my truck two pallets that wasn't even pallets it was like some type of roller some roller cart type of thingy i, I don't i don't even know i wasn't i didn't i didn't i wasn't the driver but we looked back at the BOLs and we looked at all the information that was in the BOLs, like some cases of something. 
versus what they sent me. And I'm like, bro, you got the wrong company. That wasn't that wasn't on my truck. This is what I'm telling the broker in email. That wasn't that couldn't have that wasn't on my truck. Whatever was loaded on my truck obviously was was good to go when they loaded it on my truck. I don't know that. This is stuff that's inside of a box. It's supposed to be some lighting equipment that they they're stating, right? And I know that there's companies that will file a claim on, in a New York minute and try to scam out commercial insurance companies in this freight business. I'm well aware of that, right? So I tell them, I tell the broker like, that wasn't on my truck. Then this is going into, I don't know, maybe a, a little month out. I get an email from OTR Solutions, my factoring company. The broker is not going to pay them back the $350 that they paid me to run the load or whatever it is, minus the factoring fee. So they're like, after 10 days, they're like, hey, this broker right here has a claim on some freight, some damage or something like that. Have I reached out to my insurance company? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I ain't reached out to my insurance company for what? I didn't damage anything. So I'm like, nah, nah. I ain't reach out to my insurance. I'm not reaching out to my I say, hey, listen, y'all do what y'all do what y'all gotta do. I'm not reaching out to my insurance company. So lo and behold, the broker reaches out to my insurance company and puts this claim in. <laughs> y'all, I'm like, I know y'all playing around with me right now. Y'all, y'all got to be. I told my insurance company, I said, look, the BOLs are not even matching up that these people are talking about, that saying what was on my truck. That stuff don't even match. It's not matching. The numbers don't match up. They're saying I had whatever this, whatever this LED lighting equipment was damaged or whatever it was. If it's LED lighting, nine times out of 10, that stuff was damaged in the packaging when you put it on my truck. So, and then my insurance companies call, calls me like, you know, the claim, the adjuster, claims department call, I'm talking about calling me like they ready to pay, like they ready to pay it out. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa what are we talking about right now? I said, no, y'all, y'all gonna have to do some more investigation. So I sent them over my BOL, Raycon, I sent them all that information over. Y'all listen. And I say this all the time, please, please, if y'all running loads for brokers, which I'm getting tired of doing, and I'm working on this, do you see this network right here, this big network? This is so we don't have to keep working with brokers right here. That's what this network is about to be right here. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the place to where I'm, we, we're running broker loads sparingly. Like, we're not trying to base our entire business model off of running loads for brokers. Our goal is to 86 them at the end of the day. I'm saying to myself, bro, I'm paying my insurance, but I don't want no false claims being put against my insurance by this broker. So, number one, you know I'm not running no loads for this broker, no, ever, ever. Boy, I was I was so disturbed and bothered when I seen that email because I'm like, yo, I I know better. Like I know we didn't. We it's two crates. We strapped them down and we moved them not even a hundred and something miles. Uh, what the, the, huh? I want to say it was like 150 miles or something like that. Tell me, have y'all had to deal with anything like this? I need to know that. Drop down in, in, below in the comments if y'all had any experiences where y'all had to claim uh, some freight damages put on y'all by one of these brokers stating that, <laughs> that y'all damaged the freight, like the carrier damaged the freight. 
like you got the shipper, you got the receiver, you got the carrier in the middle who's making the least amount out of everybody, but yet he gets stuck with the claim and the bill for any damages. Not the broker. Listen, y'all, not the broker, but the carrier. This is insane to me, y'all. This is this is crazy to me. Like, this is something that I'm not going to let ride. I'm like, I'm just not letting that fly. I can't let that fly like that. Especially when I know I, I, my company wasn't in the wrong. If they don't pay OTR Solutions the 300 something dollars for the load, OTR is going to be taking that money back out of my upcoming invoices that I factor with them. So I know we talk about non-recourse factoring, but that doesn't apply when claims are held against your company for freight damages, according to what OTR told me uh, via uh, email, plus I called them, right? That non-factoring recourse, the fact that non-recourse factoring only applies, say for example, if a broker, uh, you know, you don't have no claims against your company, you did everything right, you know, the, the load was delivered clean, all of that good stuff, and the broker decides not to pay OTR, then that's when the non-recourse factoring kicks in. It doesn't apply for freight damages or claims held against your company. How does a company come back 30 days later? Not the day after the load was delivered, y'all. Not, not the day after the load was delivered. This freight could have been handled any type of way during, after this load got dropped. 30 days later, they said the freight was damaged. 30 days later. So you go back to the broker, and then the broker calls up the carrier. Not the shipper, but the carrier. There's some BS. If, if I ain't never smelled BS before, this is definitely some BS. And the point of my video of sharing this story is, you guys take photos every time you go pick up a load from anywhere. Amazon, you don't typically have to do that. You just got wrap pallets with Amazon. You know, but if a pallet look crazy with Amazon, I take photos of that too. But mostly when I'm in the truck and I'm running the load, I'm taking photos. I am taking photos of all the freight. I'm always taking photos of the freight. Now imagine, imagine for a second, you go get a load picked up, you get to a shipper, the shipper loads your truck, and on top of that, they put a seal on your truck so you can't see nothing. You don't know if the freight is damaged on your truck or none of that stuff. You just know you got loaded, you got your BOL, and you out, headed to the, to, to the receiver to drop off that load. So these are things that you gotta watch out for when you're moving freight out here. Um, because you guys know claims, even though we pay insurance, insurance companies don't necessarily like to pay claims as much as commercial insurance that we pay. They don't necessarily like to pay claims. So these are things that we gotta catch on the front end before it gets, you know, before it gets escalated. Uh, further down the line, the, the, the chain. And I was like, you know what? I gotta use this story as an example for some of you guys that are just getting started in the business. You brand new, you excited about, you know, running loads for uh, get, uh, going on the load board, finding some loads that you can run via through brokers. Eventually, we weaning off of these brokers. We getting off of these brokers. The name of the game at the end of the day should definitely be to get you direct freight with a shipper, to work one-on-one -on -one with shippers. My network, big network, that's gonna be about helping carriers deal directly with shippers and get these brokers out of the picture. Get them out of the picture. I'm hearing too many stories of different guys that are running loads and they're mistakenly getting the full payment or, 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 or email showing 
what the broker got paid and what the carrier got paid. And the broker should no way, shape, or form be getting way more than what the carrier is getting. And you just sitting at a table pushing buttons. I don't care if you secured the freight. I don't care nothing about that mess. You sitting at a desk with your feet up eating popcorn and the carrier is the one actually out there risking their lives running the load, paying the insurance, paying the truck note. That's crazy to me. We gotta go direct, y'all. We gotta start going direct, moving this freight direct and getting rid of that middleman. That broker taking up way too much money and way too much space. There may be some good brokers out there, but a majority of them, shh, they eating off the backs, they eating off the backs of carriers, man, and paying them and paying them peanuts. One broker in particular, you already know who I'm talking about, the total quality folks, building a 30 million plus dollar new complex off the backs of these new guys that's coming in the trucking business and running loads for peanuts. They based it almost their entire business model is, ba is built off of new carriers coming into business and running loads for almost nothing. Just to get some, you know, just to get some work. I, I get it when you're new and you're trying to get that load book and, and most brokers are not working with you. You got a brand new authority. Yo, I, I get it. I know you got it. I know y'all got to eat too. I know y'all got truck notes. But yo, a lot of these companies in particular are definitely eating off the backs of new people that are just getting in the business and really don't understand, you know, what rates they should be charging for certain loads. Um, you know, you, you just getting started, you're 30 days in, 60 days in the game, and you know, the broker is like, yeah, we'll let you know, we'll let you run it with a new MC, but this is what the rate is. And they not even negotiating with you guys because they know you knew. Access granted. They know you, they know, see, they know, they know you knew, bro. Shout out to Freight Ninja too. Um, I, I end up losing my old spot that I had to park my, where well, I was parking my trucks at for the low low. Some new owners took over that property and I had to move my trucks. They had stickers on my trucks. So now I am paying for parking. A lot of you guys be asking where I park my trucks at. I'm only paying like a buck 85 for both of my trucks. I just got this spot because I had to move. I had to find a spot to move my truck to. Got both trucks parked out here. So they allowed me to get both of these, both this entire space, which is, you know, 53 foot size. So I'm able to get both of my trucks into this one spot. It's 185 a month. Y'all can look them up, Freight Ninja. Tell them Big Vic sent you, you're gonna get the discount. These spots are typically $225 out here. It's not bad, it's, 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 a fence, it's fenced in. They just opened this yard not too long ago. This was super last minute for me. I'm glad I was able to secure this spot um, because my trucks were <laughs> gonna get towed for this, where the spot how I had my trucks at. So they, I had that spot for three years strong though. Three years strong. I can't even get mad at it that it was finally time to, to pay. <laughs> it was finally time to pay. So. so if you're looking for a spot to park your trucks, give them a call. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna drop my guy number right here and the, uh, my agent guy who got me the spot out here, I'm gonna drop their number right in this video so you guys can give them a call if you're looking for truck, truck parking. Like you guys used to ask me, hey, where you park the trucks at? Where you park the trucks at? But they have spaces all over like the country. But I got both of my trucks in here. I was able to get them in pretty close. But yeah, we in here. Now I'm paying, I'm finally paying truck parking. <laughs> after three and a, after three years of change, I'm paying truck parking. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you guys think, you know, down below in the comments. Have you had any situations where you had any claims or some fake claims pop up with some of these brokers? You know, you didn't damage any freight and you know, they try to put it on a carrier when it could definitely have been done or load it like that when you put the when they put the freight on the truck. It's like, why do they come for the carrier? Especially with two pieces on my truck. Two, two. 
I didn't have a truck full of stuff. This was the only thing on my truck. Could my truck have damaged that stuff? That's what, that's what I wanna know. I got air ride on my trucks. Like what, how? Stuff was damaged when, you, when they put it on the truck. They need to check with the freaking shipper, not the carrier. I guess my insurance company is doing an investigation on it. I'm gonna see what they tell me. They bet, they bet not pay out no $10,000 claim and I only got $330 paid to me on that load. That's gonna be the most BS I've ever seen in my life. In the upcoming weeks, I will be opening up the big network. Y'all guys see it. I'm gonna be working to secure direct to shipper loads within that network. Also within that network, um, I'm gonna be teaching guys how to do SEO for your company because my prices to do it is gonna be crazy. I'm telling you now, if I do your SEO for your website, you, you, that bag gonna hit you. It's gonna hit you kind of heavy. I'd rather teach you how to do it for your website or your company versus me charging you to do it. I, I really don't have the time to do it. That's why I charge what I charge to do SEO for people when they when they need that done. Search engine optimization, look it up. Some, some, some of y'all are gonna be like, what's the SEO? Search engine optimization for your website to make that, so that you can pop up when people Google uh, things like uh, freight movers, uh, just, just various different keywords that will, your company can pop up for when people are searching for your service. It's gonna be a, a great networking spot for carriers to be within that network because if I have two to 300 carriers within my network, that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to secure freight directly with shippers for you guys. I'm gonna have an open enrollment. Yes, there will be a monthly subscription to be a part of that network. Still, I'm still working on the pricing for that right now. So when I do open it up, it will be a soft opening. So get ready for that network. We're building a, a network of diesel mechanics. We're building a network of towing companies, just a whole bunch of different services that are not gonna rip carriers off when called upon. Like I just seen so much crazy stuff going on in this industry, this, this is the most, and I keep saying this, this is the most unregulated industry I've ever seen. Brokers don't have to have no transparency with the carriers as far as like the prices that they, uh, the, the, the amount that they're making on the load. Some brokers say they get 15, 20%. They say they could say anything, but they're not showing that rate sheet. They're not being fully transparent with a lot of these loads that's being moved. They're just giving you a price because it's always crazy to me how I can tell a broker I'm not gonna move a low X amount of miles for $800 and they go back and put the same load back on the load board for another $200 and now the load's starting off at a thousand. Which lets me know when y'all get the goofies and the doofuses that don't, don't really know what's going on to book them loads, y'all keep looking for them same guys to book those same loads from y'all. And see, as carriers, all we got to do is get on the same page, y'all. All we got to do is get on the same page. And nothing moves without us. Nothing moves without us. Yes, it's gonna go on the plane. Yes, it's gonna go on the boat. Yes, it's gonna go on the train. But when it, it has to hit them, it has to hit them wheels at some point to get to where it's going. All right, but that's my little rant, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm still 357 hot about this claim right now, though. So let me know what y'all think down below in the comments, man. I got a lot of things out that's, that's, that's popping, a lot of things that's coming. I'm in this thing for the long haul. I came in, and I came in serious. And I'm still not playing around with this thing. So it's homie Big Vic. Always hustle. Never stop growing. Drop them comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's eat, baby.